Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Jules Whatculture.com here with Scott, and Hi. we've got something a little bit different for you today because Scott has been, well, enamored with Red Dead Redemption for a long, long time, and I even Woo. further back for Red Dead, the first Hell one, yeah. Red Dead Revolver, that was brilliant. But there's obviously been tons of details leaking at the moment because of the fact that they've just released a new trailer, and it seems that a few people have managed to get a hands-on preview of the actual gameplay itself. Only a few lucky boys over at IGN. Yeah. Now, they have the exclusive on, you know, the gameplay stuff, they played 45 minutes of it, mm. but you can go over there and just comb what they've done to, uh, to pick out the actual bits that we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Which is what I'm going to do, because you've seen the trailer like many other yes. people, but maybe you don't know the actual gameplay side of things. So what we're going to do today is basically that I know nothing beyond <laughs> the trailer, yet Scott knows quite a lot of details. He's been speaking to the right people in the right places at the right time to find out some itty bitty ditty details. <laughs> and he's going to wow me and I'm going to pretend to be you. Yes. Hey. It's, it's going to be all natural. Yeah. About everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy so with that, so let's have a chat. It's worth doing um, the story for Red Dead 2. What do you know yes. so far? So I know that it's meant to be a prequel. Yes, and it I is know, a prequel. Uh, yeah, and I know the fact that it's going to be set around the time, thanks to the trailer, in the days of the ending of the Wild West myth. Kind of like the ending of uh, the film uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. Yes. Where the gunslinger is on his way out. The railroads are coming in, they're connecting America and making it so that the lawlessness and the sort of freedom, as it were, for those people is now sort of coming to I end. can pinpoint even more than that. Fantastic. Um, so we saw John Marsden in the new trailer. We'll still do the story recap, mm -hmm. but we saw mm -hmm. John Marsden uh, get with his fresh scars. Yes. He gets betrayed by Dutch's gang in 1906. Yep. So even though the trailer says it's in 1899, assumedly mm -hmm. we're going to span a hefty chunk of time uh, so that that lines up. So that's a thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you're playing as Arthur Morgan, who doesn't even get a mention in the first Red Dead, but he's nope. a member of Dutch's gang. He's Dutch's right-hand man. Yep. Um, so far, that's the only character that we're playing as, as far as we know. Mm -hmm. And you're basically just living out the life of being this member of this gang. Um, and we'll get to how that ties into the gameplay, but... I yeah. think that's a really interesting thing to start with because a lot of, uh, like, the GTA games, like Max Payne, they always cast you as the kind of the anti-hero, somebody mm. who is willing to get to the top by whatever means necessary. Mm -hmm. By instigating you as a bad guy, it kind of removes that moral ambiguity for you yeah. doing anything bad in the game. Like, if you go up to somebody and shoot somebody, then that is your character you do. as a bad guy if you then want to choose to make him play as a kind of... Uh, bad guy turning good, oh, nice you know what I mean? Like, it, it puts you in a better position. I always think that open world games should cast you in a bad person's shoes to begin with and allow you to work out of it. That's my personal Just be opinion. a blank slate. No, no, because I, I think that that's worse. Sometimes they just go, <laughs> do whatever you want. You live your life without rhyme or reason. Right. If you give yourself in a bad person's shoes, you give you, them a redemption. What of. you're saying is you're going to shoot people in the face regardless of And not of feel anything. guilty about it. Because <laughs> I hate games that are like, oh, you're meant to be this paragon of good. Yes. You shouldn't do that. But I, I always want do to kill. Anyway. Yeah, I just want to kill. So yeah, so Arthur, but that was the thing in the first trailer. Arthur Morgan seems to be a bit of a ne'er do well, and yeah. so they're, they're, he seems a little bit one note at the minute. But whatever, we can get to that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's the basic outline, and they've pretty much cast the widest net possible because one of the first gameplay things is that they basically want to emphasize immersion. Um, so right. now we have a little contextual menu in the corner of the screen, which is kind of like The Witcher or Zelda, where it has like the face buttons and the interactions change depending okay. on where you are. Um, that makes so, sense, that makes sense. Yeah, and so one of the first things they talk about is they want to have NPC interaction to be this like big Good. deal. Good. Um, so at any given time when you're next to an NPC, you might have the option to like rob them or antagonize them, or uh, you can okay. you can rob them even at, like without doing it at gunpoint, okay. but you have different ways to interact with them. So that's one of the first things. Um, another thing is that they're trying to remove the delineation between main and side missions. They pretty much just want to have you in this world just doing stuff. Oh, that's so, good, because that's one yeah. of the criticisms that I would actually level at the original Red Dead Redemption, is mm. that while the main missions were, for the most part, entertaining, I do feel that it was so empty and vast that there wasn't yeah. actually that much to do outside of that. There were a lot of activities, but they felt quite samey. It was like the stranger of, missions. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish there was more variety to the stuff, and they were so far spread that you felt just... Oh, there's a big expanse of nothing. I'm never gonna go here again. <laughs> I like that because it kind of yeah. like juxtaposed against what you were doing. But I totally know what you mean. Mm -hmm. Like it's a way for them to sort of popularize the world with little NPC missions yeah. without flagging them as, hey, you're doing a side thing. Exactly. So yeah, so one of the the main things seems to be that they've put all this money into just refining the world itself. They want it to be this like seamless experience, cool. um, which sounds really cool. You also have a base camp, um, and so you're basically the the gang is represented as a physical space. Like it's kind of this like physical community that you can go to and interact with a whole bunch okay. of different people. Yeah. The majority 
majority of them seem to have routines and things to do, whether it's uh, sweeping floors or whatever, playing a guitar, chopping wood. Like, okay. they're maintaining the gang, and Dutch's gang is always growing. Dutch's gang is who the antagonist in the first game. Yeah. So we know they're going to get yeah. to a sizable yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, you're basically building up the camp. So um, that's the thing. At any given time, you can go back there, you can talk to people. The main quest givers are in amongst those people. Okay. Um, and IGN talked about, like, they went and talked to Dutch, who then it segued into a robbery. So we'll get to combat in a bit. But um, that's the thing. They just kind of want you to just, like, feel like you're part of a gang. Good. And let that naturally segue into whatever gangs do. Yeah. Whether that's skinning rabbits or shooting people in the face. Fair enough. I mean, it's all as, fair as long as they can make those sort of, uh, like you say, the, the mixture of side quests and mm -hmm. main quests feel more natural rather than his 50 times skinning a rabbit for one mission. <laughs> like, I, it shouldn't be a grind to get well, to that thing. Okay. Well, okay, let me know. Let's talk about hunting. Oh. Because you know what everyone got sick of doing? Uh, Shooting cougars well, in the face. And then skinning everything. Yeah. One button at a time. So yeah. they've still got the skinning, uh, but now your horse has a mobile inventory. Um, okay. So you can, there's a physical animation of like putting stuff on the horse, whether it's like rabbits or deer or whatever. Okay. You can load your horse up with all sorts of stuff or smaller animals. He, apparently he'll wrap them in something and put them on his little belt and okay. then he'll just like keep them. And then, um, but you basically, there's, there's a whole mechanic or a whole um, framework around rotting meat, which is what uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance had. So uh, you want to you wanna go out, you have your hunt, you kill but, a bunch of stuff. Bring it back. Bring it back time. fast enough. So the animals will actually okay. degrade on the back of your horse, like the deer will fall apart or whatever. Uh, and there is a point to bringing stuff back to base, you want to sell it. And so you actually have an option. Uh, if you've had a whole day of hunting, you can go back to your base camp or the main camp and you can you know, get, make sure your bellies are full and people are happy. Yeah. Or you can go and trade it in and get some money. Um, now they've made a point of saying... So your role is basically matron, make sure the kids are A little bit, but also right, like okay. with all the shooting. Okay, okay. You know, whenever you feel like you want to please a small child in a nice way okay. with the food, you uh -huh. can do that. Uh, but they, they made a point of saying that it's not a management sim. They said, like, this part of Good. the camp thing... Okay, I'm glad you've said that, because yeah. it's starting to seem like it's a bit like, <laughs> ooh, I can't see that being as fun. No, but so that's the thing. So they've said, like, this whole idea of maintaining the camp is mainly, it's just there to do it if you want to do okay. it. I think because of how uh, how much the first Red Dead reacted, you know, the whole biggest thing with the first Red Dead was that we wanted to go on the revenge mission. Yes. I would assume that there's something relating to the camp that factors into the story later, but that's pure speculation. Yeah. Um, but either way, when you kill stuff, you can go and feed the camp or you can trade it in and get money. Cool. Um, which leads to the idea of um, customization for your character. Now, they haven't actually said that there's full like costumes and different hats to get, but right. they have said that your hat gets shot off in combat. Kind of like in L.A. Noir. Yes, exactly yeah, like that. Okay. Or the old yeah. Indiana Jones game on the PS2 if you want to yeah, be old school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so there's the whole, there's a hat mechanic. And so um, your hat, hat gets shot off and they give the example of like, even if you leave um, the combat area where it's been done, yeah. you can go back and retrieve your hat and plonk it back on again. So Wait, really? Yeah, there's not like that attention to detail. Ooh, so, I, I can envision myself losing my hat in the first 10 well, minutes and never bothering to Possibly. It Apparently, uh, Arthur Morgan does have a head of hair underneath that, that hat. I don't think it's long. As bad as John Marston's uh, hot uh, hat hair. weird yeah. little wiry Roman Reigns uh, do. Anyway, and um, so they basically want you to have this like this bond with your hat. Yeah. And which me leads me to think sorry, that it's going to be... Sorry, I'm sorry, you've just said the words that are just killing me inside. What? A bond with your hat. <laughs> Do you have a bond with your hat? I'm, I mean, I do. I personally hat, have a bond you've with got a bond. I, 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 all I the mean, men that can understand the bond with the hat. But I'm just saying in a video game context, <laughs> it's not possibly the thing I'd be worried about. If we had a firefight and you lost that hat, I, yeah, you'd come back for I'd it. I'd be concerned that there would, I'd probably be dead if I lost a firefight and I was wearing this type of no, hat. No, I just man. skinned you. you ran away. I ran away and right. we, we left and you'd come back for the hat. The point is... I definitely wouldn't. <laughs> they want you to have a bond with your hat. Maybe okay. you've spent a lot of money on the hat, which is why I think that they have this customization thing because in IGN's playthrough, um, they said, you know, you can trade the, the meat in and you can keep the, the camp going or you can go and spend money on a new hat. Now, okay. I think that's a turn of phrase is to say that there are different hats to get. Now, I would say... Go if on. they were being really clever about it to make people care about the hat, they would make it so that when you put the hat on, much like when you put on uh, equipment and clothing in Skyrim and Fallout, <laughs> it gives you a bonus buff to something. Oh, that'd be hilarious. Yeah, but that would make you care about oh. the hat. If it was like you put the hat on and it increased your dead eye by one point, or Maybe. Like it increased your accuracy by 5%, you'd be like, where's my hat? <laughs> I genuinely want my 10 gallon. Like, you know? Maybe. I mean, that, I think that'll be something that they'll probably put in Red Dead Online, which is something else uh, to okay. get to because sure. they've already they've got the patent for Red Dead Online, but they haven't mentioned it yet. Yes, yeah. You know yeah. it's coming. Yeah. GTA Online makes millions of dollars a day. Yeah. They're not going to not do it. But anyway, um, but yeah, I think there'll be all sorts of customizable hats. Maybe mm -hmm. kill a snake, maybe make a snake skin hat, maybe go kill Wow, that'd be cool. You know, yeah, so yeah. see, now you want the hat. Right, now you want to come back and get your little snake hat. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So that's one thing. Um, but it, it factors into the whole idea that hunting is a bigger deal. You have a bow and arrow now. Um, okay. There's a difference between clean and dirty kills. You can't just blow the shit 
out of everything. Because otherwise they'd be worth less. Yes. Uh, yeah. So you want to do clean kills Far Cry style, that stuff is worth more money, sure. and assumedly it won't degrade as fast. Mm. Um, so there's that, like hunting is something that you're going to want to prioritize. That was much a part of the end game in the first game, um, just doing all those, to collect 10 skins and pelts yeah, yeah, and whatever. Sure, sure. And they've made, that part of, they've made that a bigger part of the main game, which is cool. So if hunting is going to take a big thing, then obviously combat's going to need to be good, because if you're yes. doing one thing a lot, the other thing has to be perfect. So what do we know about combat? Now there is, a, for the most part, um, they haven't gone into the weeds as to how exactly the combat's different. Um, right. But there is a really cool thing in here and um, that they've brought across from Max Payne 3. The last Max Payne was developed by Rockstar. Not Remedy, not the dive, oh. sadly. But the uh, camera angles, when you take people out, it'll do the reverse shot oh, amazing. to show them being taken That's out. That's cool. So um, you can just walk into a bar and be like, bang, 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 yeah. and it cuts to the I'm line. hoping super slow-mo and then just like, Rawr, which was the best thing, well, one of the best things about Max Payne 3. Should we reenact it right now? Go Hold on. on. And then the camera will be like, yeah, so that's one of the things in Max Payne 3, which is really good to see. I mean, it's just a, it's a stylish thing, but yeah. it's gonna it's totally gonna work. Um, they mentioned the whole the horseback combat is back, and they said it was a bit easier to control. Good, because um, the horse control is like a bloody the Titanic. Do you not want to hold the right stick in and then hold the dead oh. eye? It's two things are worth mentioning here. Dead eye. Uh, there were three levels to dead eye in the first game. Mm -hmm. You um, you could slow motion, then you could sweep targets, and then you could manually like decide what you yes. want to aim. Yeah, yeah. This one starts out with level three, uh, which is the one the best one. Good. The one that, where you can just nip, finally, decide what that, you want to do. That aim. makes much. More sense. Yeah, because the second level was horrible. Yeah, just like, um, uh, so uh, this thing, uh, they mentioned the dead eye thing, and it works the way you want it to. Good. And uh, the other thing is the horse. Now they've changed the way the horse works. Uh, right. Now you have a horse bond. So not only do you got to care about your hat, oh my you got to care about your does, horse. Does the horse get a hat? Yes, give me a pork pie hat. So yeah, the, you make a bond with the horse, which right. is like in Zelda. And if the horse dies, it resets. So you want to get your horse, get your steed. Perma death horse. Perma death horse. death pony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Puma horse. So basically, you have yeah, you have this horse bond. And every time you know, in the old one, you would throw the lasso around the thing. I do. And you bring it in. Yeah. Uh, this time, you'll start to build a bond. I don't know if it, they haven't described if it's visualized, if it's a meter or whatever it is. But oh, you're... I hope to God they've got a horse whispering mini game. Like, like, <laughs> like, hey, I'm gonna ride you. I understand. The horse is like. <laughs> but initially, it's gonna be like. What? Yeah, and then what? eventually it's like, alright, oh, yeah. yeah. But, um, that's so yeah, that's the thing. I think that it'll be a bit like Zelda's, um, but they've said that over time, um, building the horse bond means that it'll bring you equipment because, okay. oh, there's another thing. I'll get to this in a sec. Okay. Um, so the, the more you build up the horse bond, the more reliable it'll be in combat, the more it'll bring you stuff, the more you can, you know, just learn to bond with the horse. So the horse brings you items and equipment? Well, it can do. But the, that's that's a separate point. We the, the fact. Well, it, I was expecting right when I started this conversation with you. I just thought on. we were going to talk about sort of like old Wild West stuff, and it was going to be no. much more realistic. And now we're talking about horses with hats, and now the horse brings you stuff like a medic, and you sweep up after people and you feed them. This doesn't even sound like a red you dead. Don't, <laughs> it sounds like you've just had a fever dream. You don't need to do the sweeping if you don't want to. Most of the other stuff is true. Anyway, yeah, not the horse hat thing, carry although on, it should be. Carry on. Um. So yes. Yeah, so the horse thing is that yeah, you want to build up a bond with the horse, but that is it resets. Yeah. So you want to maintain your horse and maintain your hat and um, but also the biggest change which could split the fan base is that you'd no longer have all your items on the rotary wheel you have pistol or a pistol on you and everything else is on the horse which is what max Payne 3 did oh wow which so, is, so basically it's just like hold on guys yeah give me a sec do, yeah just like get those like, <laughs> i've got the winchester just 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 give me, give me they're just shooting at the horse the horse is like don't kill my horse i have to reset this one and then you've got to revive it and, oh but, uh, god imagine, just imagine one reviving the, the horse oh god just like pumping it yeah. just be like it's fine come on i hope you can name it otherwise what else are you going to scream at the screen oh my god but whatever so uh the thing with the horse is that yeah it's mobile inventory and that transfers over to it to load out as well Ooh, that's, um, that's a big change I'm it's interesting i'll be intrigued to see how that I would, well see, Max Payne 3 did it where even if you had a pistol in your hand, you held the barrel of the rifle with your other hand, so you're always running around with something else. Yeah. So, uh, and that's in one of the screenshots too, so I would assume that that's the crack, you can hold okay, two things. Okay, that would be good. So we've done all of this, and there's not, I don't know, there's not that much that seems like a new game mechanic. Like, a lot of this is refining what mm. Red Dead was, which is fine, that game was one of the best games of all time. Very true. But, um, they're br basically bringing across the heists uh, from GTA 5, which are now called robberies. Good. Uh, and the example mission Hopefully that I generated. Hopefully it won't take them a year to put I, it into the game. Oh god. It'll be in Red Dead Online. Mm. But um, so the example that IGN gave was that they basically went and talked to Dutch, uh, leader Dutch man, and he, uh, he just put them on a robbery mission. So they went to a Good. bank. Um, but interestingly, they were given choices along the way. Um, so one of the members of your team is this like female harlot looking lass. I didn't call her a harlot. That's what she's called. Maybe it was a career back then. You know, whatever, the this, this sort of like standard saloon piano playing woman who's got the cleavage. You know her? She's, yeah, yeah everyone, I everyone knows I, her. I know her. her. Um, she's Tandy Newton's character in, in Westworld. There you go. And um, so, there's, so there's that. So basically when you're on the way to the bank, you can say to, the, to her, um, you want her to make a distraction. Either she runs in, and does oh. the whole seductress. So she can actually hey. make it slightly easier. Yeah, so. Like, okay. 
It seems like you've basically got a stealth approach and an action approach. Cool. You can send her in to, to seduce the guy that's the teller, the guy that's at the front of the bank. Or you can do, she, you can make her run into town and do the whole, oh, help me, I'm lost. Mm. Which is how they talk. And, uh, and someone will like then do that and you can then factor that into your approach. That's clever. So the other uh, choice along the way is when you get to the safe, you basically take the guy hostage when you walk in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, how many options you have at this point, but you on their playthrough, they had the guy by the neck. And they said to him, like, open the safe. And he yeah. couldn't do it. So the option then was that um, Arthur Morgan can either crack the safes, which assumedly is some minigame thing, mm -hmm. or you just put dynamite in each one of them and blow them up, Ooh. Um, which is what the first trailer showed. Right, okay. Um, but when they did that, that then obviously called all the law enforcement. And obviously would blow up a lot of the money as well. Sure. Doesn't do that in games. Oh, sure, That never yeah, does that yeah, in games. Yeah, just sure it's on. fine. Yeah. But um, So they basically blow everything up, and then they had a big old showdown with the law, okay. and, um, and, and went from there. But it means that you've got choices in, in the robbery itself. That sounds cool. Which is another part of the the whole immersion interaction thing. Well, that already sounds like a much more sort of like multi-tiered mission. That's mm. what I'm going to be looking for. The hunting stuff, I I'm, I'm, can give or take unless yeah. it's really intrinsic like, like in, into the uh, the gameplay. I, I'll need to know if you can punch a horse to death. Oh yeah, definitely. Punch a horse's hat off its head and then the guy <laughs> sweeping up after it and then you go run bank. Anyway, so those are the details that we know are coming out in Red Dead Redemption 2. Yes. The release date for it is October when? October the something. October the something 2018. So you can look forward to that. But if you've got any more information or you want to share your comments with us, your thoughts on how this game is shaping up, then please do so down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. I've been Scott. And we'll speak to you soon. Goodbye. Bye.